My name is Nikki Baker. I'm a kindergarten teacher here at Farmington Elementary. Um, this is the third school I've taught at in Davis County. Because it's their first experience in school, there are so many aha moments with kindergartners. You know, as things shift down, most kids learn to read now in kindergarten. So I get to see hundreds, probably thousands of little light bulb moments every day, every week, every year of just that spark of learning being ignited and then being so excited as we sort of unlock the alphabet and figure out the mystery of reading. And it is just so powerful to see them love books and love reading and ask questions and be so curious. I think it keeps me curious and excited about learning. One of the ways that I feel like I've been able to learn so much in just teaching for eight years is I've moved schools three times. So I have had the opportunity to teach with three different teams of fantastic teachers. And I like to go watch other teachers. There's great information online. I love to read, I love to study, and just keep up on what's happening in the district, what good practices are. Every week as I sit down and plan my lessons, I think how can I present this really educational material, this learning material, in a way that's fun and creative, and so they almost don't even know how much they're learning. Um, not very long ago, there were some people in watching and we started this routine that we do in Davis District. Um, often people call it the spelling routine and I call it the challenge word routine just because I think that's a little more exciting. And I said, it's time for the challenge word routine. And one little kid said, I love the challenge word routine. And it was just so funny. I mean, it's, a, it's spelling practice. It's really not that exciting, but if you, wrap it up in a way that it's fun and that it's light, um, then the kids are learning so much and it's almost like they don't even know it. Those times for me when I am just so happy, I think they happen so often and they're small moments for me. You know, it's when a couple of kids run in from recess and lay dandelions on my desk and go, I love you, Mrs. Baker. Or um, this year in about November, I got a letter at home um, addressed to my home address and it was a letter from a boy I'd had the year before and it said, to Mrs. Baker, I am doing so, 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 so good in first grade, all because of what you taught me. So it's just the little things like that that just make me so grateful to be in a job where I have an opportunity to really make a difference and to sort of launch them um, off to first grade in a way that they're, that they're ready. So I'm Tim Best. I'm the Elementary Healthy Lifestyle Supervisor for Davis School District. I work with our directors of physical activity, which is our PE preps in our elementary schools. So when we envisioned our Healthy Body, Healthy Mind program, we looked at some research from the medical and scientific communities uh, that uh, stated that your two hemispheres in your brain have to be flooded with blood for learning to occur. And the analogy I always use is if you're trying to take a math assessment at 3, 3 a.m. when you just wake up, you won't be very successful. So uh, I know our kids aren't sleeping, but sometimes they get lethargic, and so we thought, how can we create a program where we can have kids exercise before they go into their uh, direct explicit instruction, and um, they're energized, and, and you know it in your personal uh, lifestyles as well, that you feel a little bit better, hopefully, after you exercise, you're a little more vibrant, alert, awake and energized. So that was our, our plan and then we looked at uh, hopefully not impacting test scores um, in a negative aspect but a positive aspect and, and for the most part the test scores increased. Teachers in these pilot schools took a leap of faith. Nine schools currently participate to some degree whether it's three minutes in the morning or up to 15 minutes in the morning and 10 minutes in the afternoon. And so it's, it's growing. We've, we've been able to uh, procure grants to uh, help buy some equipment for kids to use 
to participate in this program. We've, we've expanded it statewide. Uh, it's, go, it's going nationally. Uh, schools have inquired as to what we're doing and Reebok as well has wanted to create a program that utilizes aspects of what we're doing here in, in Davis School District and recently the American Heart Association wanted to give Davis School District $150,000 a year for three years to help uh, promote and get this program out into more schools. But I, I love being, you know, working with elementary school kids um, and I, I've enjoyed every second of it and I, I'm fortunate that I'm an educator and, and I get to hopefully make a difference in the lives of our elementary students and others. I'm Christy Jacobson. I'm at East Layton Elementary School as their librarian. And um, I just have a blast teaching kids basic library skills. And what caught my interest about being a librarian was um, uh, I loved taking my kids to the library every week when we were, they were little. And we would get a big bag full of as many books as they wanted to check out and then we'd read it before bed. And when I saw the opening, for a librarian position, I thought, oh my goodness, that's perfect. Love to read, love kids, and it has turned out to be the best job I've ever had. It's enjoyable, but also, if you're ever having a bad day, the kids are the ones that, there's always somebody that comes and gives you a hug and tells you that they love you. I think the biggest challenge with Literacy Night has been the stress of, will they come again next year? Every year I feel that and I worry about that and every year more people come. When I talk to people who have come, they just say it's such a unique opportunity for their kids to be able to be one-on-one -on -one with these authors. And they always go home saying, Dad, what book should I write tonight? I love to hear that. The, the librarians in this district are amazing. They, and they're all good at different things. And I never feel like I'm as good as most of them. <laughs> you know, we're all, we have different personalities. The thing that I'm really good at are programs. I love to come up with things to help inspire the kids or help out somehow in the community. So some of the things we do are, I'm in charge of the reading contest for the school. Um, we have a competition um, for a genre wheel where they can read one book from each genre and if they do they get a free book or um, battle the books where they, that's their competition where they read from a list of 10 to 20 and then they compete to see who knows the books best. And they love things like that. And I just really enjoy putting together programs. So I guess that's probably the things that I do that might be different than others. I'd have to say that the very first year, maybe the first week that I was here, I realized this is the very best job ever. Spending time with the kids, getting that feedback, feeling their love, and then sharing um, books that I loved. And, and then I enjoy, I enjoy the paperwork and the menial tasks. And it just was a perfect mix of all the things that I'm good at or enjoy. And I thought, I am so glad I took this job. This was perfect. I'm Dan Martin. I'm the HVAC foreman for Davis School District. Um, we work with a crew of seven guys, take care of all the heating equipment in the district. Our, our field is pretty challenging here in the school district because of the broad range of age in the equipment. We have older systems that are pneumatic, old steam boilers. Davis School District's been really good about pursuing high efficiency in all things. And so we've been able to get high efficiency boilers and we'll replace the old when we can with the new and try to save more money and keep the utility costs down. But these guys that I work with, they have to know the old technology plus the new electronic stuff coming out. The old boilers were kind of like an old car. The new boilers are kind of like a new car. They're totally different circuit boards. You know, so there's a broad range of knowledge they've got to have. I've been with the school district since I was 14, basically. So I started in the cabinet shop. I spent two summers <clears throat> in the cabinet shop building cabinets. And then when I turned 16, I became a part-time custodian. Did that through high school and 
The Monday after I graduated, then I got on in maintenance and I've been here for about 20 years. Most challenging situation or project we've had was changing the boilers out at Bountiful High. We lost two of those and so we took on a project to save a bunch of money and we tore two big steam boilers out of the basement of that school and brought in two new ones and got it down there and with the help of our welders and electricians and everybody we got the thing put back in and two huge boilers got installed and uh, saved quite a bit of money for the district. Um, yeah, everything we do is a team effort. There's nothing, in fact, I try to run my shop as a team. We don't, I try not to look at myself as a boss. We do everything together. A lot of the projects are huge and you just, you can't do any of this stuff by yourself. So we have to do a lot of things as a group and as a team and support each other. I feel I'm successful because of the people I work with. The guys in my shop are amazing. They're a huge support for me. No one person can do it. And um, without them, I mean, this district has millions of square feet and 100, build, 100 plus buildings. And so the support I get from my guys and my bosses, it's what makes me successful. I love coming to work to work with the people I work with and to provide an environment for the kids. My, I have a daughter in junior high, I have two kids in elementary, you know, so I kind of feel like I support them at the same time. You know, it's, it's good to get out and, and uh, <clears throat> make a difference for all the kids and all the people in the public. Uh, my job is challenging, it's different every single day, so it's fun to come and, you know, come and hang out with friends and work and get things done and accomplish some amazing projects. My name is Tracy Mead. I have taught at Davis for 22 years, I believe. Um, I have taught math that entire time. I like math a lot. Love is maybe a strong word. I don't know that I was that good at math. I was pretty good at it. I like math from a standpoint of there's an answer and I can get to it. And I knew, again, that it was something that students really struggled at and that math could be a really teacher-dependent course. And I decided I wanted to teach math. There is some pressure to being the department chair at Davis High. Um, I came to Davis with a lot of amazing mentors. Just, I tell people that I lucked into a job here because I really sort of did. It wasn't like it was on my list of I can't wait to teach at Davis High. I had no idea what the math department here was like. So I got here to student teach and discovered that there was a force to be reckoned with here, that there was a team of teachers with the same goal who worked together collaboratively, who really is easy to be the department head on some level because I have so many quality teachers working in my department who carry the load a lot of the times. They are part of what goes on. There's a lot of, you know, it, there's buy-in as a team and so I have all this extra help. They're, my biggest pressure this year is that um, this year for the first time I am the only BC Calculus teacher and we have a 100% pass rate that goes back for several years. And I've been part of that, but it's never just been me. We as a math department eat lunch together every single day. And that is time when we discuss students in our classes, we discuss things we're teaching and how it's going and that this, that this particular lesson didn't go very well and are we teaching it like that and can we fix that and is, are there adjustments we can make? A lot of other people don't want to eat lunch with us. <laughs> I guess the conversation is quite mathematical, but it also is about our students and about how they're doing and what we can do to help them. I think you have to really care about your students on a lot of levels. I think one of the biggest things I know that makes a difference with my students is I'm really interested in what they do extracurricularly. And when you have that student that you just think you can't really reach, if I can go watch them play in football and say, hey, great game Friday night, all of a sudden barriers are broken down. It's, it's a whole different ball game because they know that it's not just in math and it's not just about how they perform in math. I had the opportunity one year I went on sabbatical and went to BYU and taught stats classes for them. I thought, you know, maybe that's something I want to do. Maybe at some point I'd like to be a college professor. I, I tell people I was having a little midlife crisis that maybe I was just a high school teacher. After about two months, I don't think it was even two months, I said, I am not just a high school teacher. I am a high school teacher and it's the best job in the world.
My name is Kathy Pozzoli, school nurse for Davis School District, and I have 25 schools. All of them are junior highs and high schools, but one elementary. We deal with everything from just working on the computer to checking heads for lies, dealing with communicable diseases in the, in the community, um, working as a liaison for parents and, and students and educators and administrators and um, helping making transitions for uh, students with medical conditions into a classroom so they can be successful with their disability or their, or their disease. So the most rewarding part is um, it's definitely the kids and, and seeing how they can succeed in the classroom and, and also the, how we can work together with all the different departments the, the fun part about my job is I get to work with everybody. So I get to work with the educators, the administrators, I get to work with the health department, I get to work with doctors, I get to work with nutritionists, and the kids, it's always fun to see them. They give you hugs, they're excited to see you, you're helping them in the classroom, you're getting to see them succeed. So you can see them when they're at their worst, but you get to see them when they're at the best. So that's very good. When you see someone who has been so sick, or so um, down, and then you get to see them after you've worked with them, and you've seen their, um, you've worked with their doctor, and you've, and you've, you've worked with their classroom teacher. The teacher's been so frustrated, you don't know what to do, and then all of a sudden you, you get something in in action. Everyone works together, and at the end of the year, this child succeeded. And the medical process has changed over the years, so from diabetes, the way we have uh, approached it has changed. So. It's, it's gotten better, we understand it better, um, we treat it differently. Everyone's taking more responsibility is what I'm saying. So they feel more comfortable in the classroom. The, the teachers feel more comfortable, the parents feel more comfortable, the student feels more comfortable. We are able to help these kids and we all take this as a team approach. We do medication trainings, medication audits. Um, we have to make sure that all our medications are current. They have to have all the right um, forms, paperwork. We have to make sure that we have doctor signatures on everything that we have in our schools. We have to make sure everything is within code. Um, that everyone, that every medication that's in our school, we have to make sure that everyone's trained to give it. We have a great team. I've got to say, we really have a great team of nurses. We we work well together. We always check on each other, make sure we need help because there's not very many of us, and we need that. We need to make sure that we're all okay. My name is Michelle Reed and I teach sixth grade at Heritage Elementary and this is my seventh year teaching, all in sixth grade. One thing that is super important to me in my teaching is that my students feel like they're part of a family because I remember back when I was in school, the one thing I always remembered is how I felt. Not necessarily what I did, but how I felt when I left that school year or when I left that school. Um, and so I try and make sure that my students feel comfortable at school. And one way to do that is to find a connection that you have with every student, whether that's through sports that they like, through activities they're involved in. I love it when it's a school subject they're super passionate about. And so try to connect with each student on some level and make sure that they feel comfortable here at school. Something that I have found that's very cliche, lots of quotes about it, but if you can change the attitude of students, you can change their whole outlook on learning. And so something I'm very known for in the school and with other students is my love for math. And they know when they come in my class, they can never say that they don't like math because that's just not okay with me. Math is my favorite subject, so it has to be everybody's favorite subject. So they come in, we talk about it, we do cheers, I love math, I love math, I love math, and I tell them, you know what, maybe in your head you really don't love math, but if you start telling yourself you love math, it's gonna change. And it really is amazing to see um, the progress and the change that happens over the year with students who hated math before and that truly end up loving it. I'm a dancer, I love to dance. I can't sit still for too long, so I always have to be up and doing things, and I think students agree that they need to be active in doing things as well, so hands-on is the best way to go. In math, we usually, generally, in a day, will take notes in a math journal, and I use lots of colors, colored pencils, to 
exactly describe what we're doing um, and so that they can see it visually. They use color pencils in their math journal and then we'll and then we'll use some activity with that as well. In the morning, every morning at school, we walk a mile before right at the beginning of the day. And I can tell you there's snowstorms and I know that we say that the snowstorms bring in the crazy behaviors, but on those days that we can't walk the track, I see a huge difference. On top of teaching elementary school, I coach the drill team at Leighton High. And so a typical day for me, with, if it's an 8A, we have practice at 6 a.m. So I practice over there at Leighton from 6 a.m. till about 8.20, and then they have to be dismissed to go get ready for school. And I race over here and teach school here. And some days I have to race back from here over there to finish practice, um, to do an after school practice Monday and Wednesdays. I guess one situation that I see arise many times and I love when it happens and it just reaffirms to me that I'm where I'm supposed to be teaching what I'm supposed to is when students from junior high come back and they talk about, Miss Reed, I hated math before, but when I got in your class, I love math now and I have my math journal and I use it in junior high and it's my favorite subject still. Anytime that happens, it, it's the greatest feeling in the entire world. When I'm able to share my love of math with somebody else and they're able to pick that up too and carry it on with them. So I'm Melanie Swan, and I do a ton, I, I guess. I, I teach ceramics, one, two, and three. I teach sculpture. I teach um, AP art history. And basically, I play with kids all day long. The feel of clay going through your hands is just, it's like, it's like magic. And then you, you put it in the kiln, and it's got glaze on it, and you open up the kiln, and it's either Halloween or Christmas. And when it's Halloween, you just go, Meep. and when it's Christmas, it's like, yes. And when you lift those pots out of the kiln and they're still warm, it's kind of like they're alive. You know, it's like you hold them and it's like there's, a, there's, there's life to them. And there's something magical about seeing that transformation. You know, you, you got this moldable dirt. It's dirt. You know, you dig it up anywhere. Put it in the kiln and it's changed forever. It's changed forever. It's never going to be the same again. And it's going to last longer than you do. It's not going to get burned in a fire. It's not going to get destroyed. Some fragment of it, it's going to be here for thousands of years and your fingerprints on it live forever. Why wouldn't you like it? Every critique, I show them what they're doing well. Every critique. Even if what I, they're doing well is that they came to class that day. That's the first thing they've done well then. I make sure that I reward, I praise, I acknowledge, I do everything I can to reward that did well. I had a cute little girl, um, not very many friends, and one day she was, she did something, and it was like all of a sudden I made the connection, and I go, your dad's, who's your dad? And she tells me, and I go, oh, I know who you are. And she goes, what do you mean? And I said, your father was my very first TA. And he was so excited when you were born. And she goes, no, he wasn't. He doesn't like me. And then I find out that, that her parents had been divorced a couple years after she was born. And her father's never seen her since. He said, let me share what I know about your dad. Let me share the first time I ever saw you and how excited your dad was. Here, at the end of the school year, she came in and she goes, Swan, guess what? And I said, what? And she goes, I wrote to my dad. And I said, really? And she goes, yeah, and he sent me a plane ticket. I'm spending the summer with my dad. It's those moments that make teaching, they're not about clay, they're not about English. They're not about what you test or what you put in the grade book. That's where teaching is. When you change a life forever, forever.
Uh, my name is Joe Viscotchel. I am a school psychologist here in the Davis School District, and this is my second year with the district. So one of my goals is to try to engage students and develop their academic skills. One of the biggest problems with some students with disabilities is their executive functions. So what the executive functions are is they're, they're all in your frontal lobe. They're planning, monitoring, organization of materials, you know, coming up with problem solving strategies, you know, managing your own behavior. And so a lot of students I work with have a, have a really tough time with that. And so what I wanted to do was create a group that was specifically dedicated towards teaching those skills that some of us take for granted or develop naturally. It's really not, you know, it's not stigmatizing, it's not demeaning, it's really about, okay, what is an executive? What does an executive do? What does their day look like? And so it's a new way of thinking about, you know, developing those executive skills. At Vista Education Center, there's every student there has a special you know, a specialized education program. It's the most restrictive placement in Davis School District. There I do a lot of file reviews. I look at what sort of assessments need to be done. How can we best help these students? I don't usually run as many groups in that setting. It's much more about getting to know the students. I do a lot more individual counseling there. So the other two are elementary schools and in in the elementary schools, my role is a little bit more typical of a school psychologist. I run social skills groups, the executives groups I mentioned. I do a lot of testing, so cognitive, social behavioral testing to see, you know, what is a student's learning potential and how can we figure out, you know, what cognitive strengths do they have, can we build on those. I try to figure out, okay, where is the student struggling and how can I help the student join in their education and get the most success out of it. I, I often say that you know, this is the best job. I have the best job. I have a ton of autonomy. I am able to sort of structure my day in a way that gives me some freedom to pursue my goals and in a way that I'm able to help students in a, in a really big way. One of, my, one of my favorite interventions is the Say OK program. And what that is is a lot of children struggle with non-compliance. And the Say OK program is, it's just a bunch of boxes and it says, say OK today. And every time an instructor gives a precision command or an instruction and the child says okay and, and complies with that instruction, they get a check. And this program has been able to turn one, one particular student's uh, educational setting completely around. Where he was at the start of the year picking up chairs and, and holding them over other, other students' heads and yelling and screaming and throwing keyboards in the computer room. He's gotten to the point, he, he's not completely compliant all the time, but he is working really hard and he is able to, to stay in his chair, he's able to get his work done, and you know, he, he comes up and he shows me this, this one time he got 13 check marks, which is huge for him. And so it was just, it's actually pinned up on my wall over there. It, I'm Sandra Zakowski and I teach second grade in the PAL program here at Bountiful Elementary. PAL is um, our district's program for advanced learners in the primary grades and it, that's exactly what it stands for, primary advanced learners. Initially in my career I taught fifth grade for about 10 years and then I decided that I wanted to make a dramatic shift to keep things fun and interesting and I went to first grade and I taught that for about five or six years and then um, the district and, and my principal approached me with the possibility of teaching the PAL program when we wanted to pilot it at Bountiful Elementary last year. And I thought it sounded really, really exciting because I love doing lots and lots of extra enrichment things and I, I felt like it would be the perfect venue for me to really explore my creativity and do the things I love most really love to do about everything and so because I can I, I have students who go through curriculum very very quickly and we move through the curriculum about twice the pace as a regular classroom so that leaves me more time for the arts and we do a lot of music and we do a lot of fine arts and we do a lot of even science we've been doing STEM Fridays things like that everything that I can do to add enrichment to um, this program I'm able to do because we do move through the regular classroom academics quite quickly. Well, I want people to see how much fun we're having here. So often I take pictures about, I would say about once a month. I'm photographing things that we display on the wall. I think one of the things I do that 
helps bring differentiated curriculum and things into the classroom is I do write a lot of grants. And each year I try to pull off at least one or two. And this year I was able to get um, a cash, in classroom, cash for Classrooms grant for our arts. And I also wrote a Donors Choose grant, which gave us some logical thinking and math puzzles and chess sets. We started a chess club in the winter. But I really do love my job. This is why I get up in the morning. I am one of those people who will work as late as I can and come here as soon as I can because I, I love, I just love this process. I love the environment. I love the, I love the creative focus that it gives me every day. Not one year has ever been like the previous one. It's constantly different and changing and it's interesting and sometimes stressful sometimes hard, but never, ever boring. My name is Jeff Barlow, and I teach first grade French immersion here at Samuel Morgan Elementary in Caseville. I served a French-speaking mission in Switzerland and uh, thought, ah, oh, I want to teach French, that would be so awesome. And uh, other things came up and, and took me a different direction. And I worked for Deseret Book Company for 20 years. But uh, I eventually found my way back to education when I, I learned about the immersion program. And I thought, wow, what an amazing adventure that would be to teach little kids to speak French. Um, I've always been told I have a natural rapport or gift with, with children. Um, I have three children of my own, and my passion is, is working with them and doing things with them. And I like to see how the world works through a child's eyes and to, to experience that and so I involve all of the, the senses so seeing what we're experiencing, hearing what we're experiencing, tasting, touching, I, I incorporate all of that into the teaching so that's maybe a little bit of a different thing. So in an immersion situation where I'm speaking only French, many of the kids at the first of the year don't speak any French, don't understand any French and so it's a little difficult to keep their attention. So I myself have always been a very animated, use my hands a lot. I, I have puppets, manipulatives, toys, pictures, things that I use as I'm teaching to keep their attention, to draw their focus on me and help them stay focused. When we're doing our reading time in French, um, I've taken these kids from not understanding anything to being able to read in French in their first year because we act it out. We do things that I learned in my past career at Treehouse and that's involving the children in acting out little scenes or little parts from the story. I had lots of fun experiences in, in the business world, the nonprofit world, the government world, but every day I tell my wife, I love what I do. This is what I need to be doing. This is, this is my dream. And okay, I'm only partway through my first year, I realize that, <laughs> but uh, I truly have a passion for what I'm doing. I truly love being here at the school every day. I love the kids. I have 60 of them, 30 in one class and 30 in the other class. We rotate partway through the day with the immersion program. And so that's a challenge, having 60 first graders. A lot of advice that I've gotten from different family members, but one piece I remember in particular that my sister gave me, she's a fifth grade teacher up in Montpelier, Idaho. And she said, there's going to be days when you are frustrated. There's going to be days when you feel like throwing in the towel. That happens with every job, with every career. She says, sometimes more so in schools because we're faced with so many challenges in today's world. And she said, the one thing you've got to remember is it's your passion, it's your dream. Never forget that and always hold on to that. Always remember that this is what you really, really, really wanted. <laughs> and keep that in mind and all those frustrations and, and aggravating things will, will seem like nothing.